Okay, I brought my little hairball back. I went ahead and killed the um, instancing node here. So there's, it's no longer instancing the, um, the matchstick. All we have is here. Okay, now I can go here to the um, presets. Where to go? Okay, there it is, right there. Presets, and I'll have all these different styles of hair I can I can use. I can use. Actually, these aren't so much hair, more than than. Um, well, no, here's some. Okay, this is tall grass. This is um, semi clumpy brown something. I'm not quite sure. Let me see. Can't see it because it's so small. Anyway, red straight. Finally, get to some fuzzy brown. I have a actually have a fro here. Um, let me do that. Let me just go ahead and add the fro to our character. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see. And hopefully, it, oh, there we go. It accepted it. Had to double click it. And let's render that out. And now our little fuzzy ball here has a fro. Okay, so there's some, um, so there's some, um, preset parameters that we can use and also if you you create a hair system that you like you can go ahead and save those in the parameters as well okay you can save them right there okay let's go ahead and push off to the okay the next section I wanted to talk about was cloth and that's at the end of chapter 29 and uh, the exercise that uh, if you, in fact if you want to if you wanted to create a cloth clothing for our model here you can go to page, let's see, that tutorial was on page 758 and runs through 760. And I, worked, I went ahead and worked through it, and I'll show you what the final is through this tutorial. But uh, I'm going to just create a real simple tutorial of having this, this cloth right here drop on top of uh, our model and drape over her. Okay, so I use the same resolution as I did with the, um, the previous model. Um, let's see if I can get to that quickly here. To convert that to editable poly, and we can see the resolution here. Oh, there you go. Okay, so we have a little bit of resolution. I could, I can increase it more. I think I, I should, but I'll just keep this resolution here the way I have it. So while I have it selected, I'm just going to go over to the modify list and I'm going to apply the cloth modifier onto it. Okay, so the first thing I need to tell you is that um, even though the cloth properties appear and the simulate appears here, nothing's going to happen because automatically as soon as I hit the cloth parameter, the cloth parameter has to be turned on. It's automatically turned off, okay? So you need to remember that. So if nothing happens right away, is because you have to turn it on. So the way you turn it on is you have it, have the cloth selected, and you go ahead and uh, invoke the object properties, and you go up here, select the plane, and you punch the little cloth button there, and that now turns the cloth on. So what you then need to do is go to the presets and pick a material of what what you best thing that the cloth should represent. In this case, I'm going to use silk, okay, which goes ahead and changes all these parameters. I'm going to add a thickness of the, of this silk to about half a millimeter. And everything else is okay. I now want to create a collision. And the collision is going to be with our model here. So I need to include her here. So now I'll add an object and I have the eyes, eyelids, upper pupils, all her eye properties, interior mouth, and that's not really that important, but the skin and the toenails. I'll just include it all. So all of a sudden that's there and I need to punch the collision button down here. Okay, one important thing that I want to show you on the collision, let's say the cloth um, somehow some of the model, the collision model penetrates through the cloth so what you may want to do is increase the offset here and that will allow uh, a little bit of a buffer to be uh, placed between the cloth and the model okay so let's go ahead and I'll say okay down here and now I can have that selected and I can then oops 
want to now run the simulation. Okay, there's the simulation. It drops down and it goes right through. So, as you can tell, I have some work to do. So, but um, that's basically the way that the, uh, the cloth system works. Now, what I may have to do is add more of a, of a buffer on my collision object. So, I'm going to go ahead. First of all, I want to erase the simulation, start at the zero point, go back to the properties, take a look at all my collision objects here, especially the skin. I'm going to just concentrate on the skin. Let me drive up the buffer to something ridiculous like 45. And go ahead and move this off. Run the simulation again. Oh, I need to say OK here. Close that. Uh, simulate again. And it could be I drove it up too much. So what I'm going to do is hit Escape, Cancel. Cancel that. Erase the simulation. And go back to Object Properties. Take a look at my collision. And that's like way too high. So I'm going to bring this down to maybe 5. I'm guessing. So say OK. Go ahead and simulate again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can see how I can kind of fix that by increasing the buffer. But, you know, notice it's still dropping through. So I might have to increase the, um, the geometry here. And I'm going to go ahead and do that so I can show you. Okay, erase the simulation. Go back to the top. Let's see, now I have to choose a cloth object. But now I want to go to editable poly. I'm going to say yes, and <clears throat> you know what, now since I've moved from the object level, I cannot increase the, um, the resolution, so I'm going to have to live with that. But when I did this before, I went ahead and divvied the, um, the cloth up into more geometry, and it seemed to work out a lot better. So I made, so I made more rectangles than I have represented here and it and it seemed to work out. So the more resolution you have, the better the uh, the simulation. Okay?